a very different morning this morning at Tokyo Disneyland. There's no wait for security. It's, it's just after 8 a.m. Park opens at 9. Um, but there's no wait for security. We're going to go right through, I think. Well, they're funneling us this way, but either way, I don't think we're waiting. So, long story short, slow days do happen here. They're fewer and far between. Um, but this being the day, it's a Sunday, but it's the day before a bunch of events kick off. So I assume people are waiting or maybe just after spring break. Maybe it'll be like this tomorrow. Um, we'll have to see, but uh, there's a trade-off there, right? So I didn't have to get here super early. I'm actually closer up to the front than I was the day I got here an hour earlier. But uh, uh, the trade-off is they're not going to open these gates until you know, probably right at nine o'clock on the dot, as opposed to they'll open earlier on days where it's super busy. Not only are there these giant banners and bunting in World Bazaar, there is a golden Donald's. There's also these cool things. We'll come back and look at this later, maybe when it's a little calmer. But this is, uh, this is pretty wild. Love it. Very excited for this event. Oh my God, this is insane. Look at this. Oh yeah, we need to come back when we have a moment and look at all this decor, holy cow. Look at this. Wow. Welcome to Duck City. It feels like the first real event in a while. Like this is full throttle for them. Oh, look at the fountain. Oh, come look at this more. Look at the planters. Oh my God. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. They even themed the manhole covers. Rope dropping the Tomorrowland Terrace for Quacky Duck City food. You'll notice it's cosmic rays basically. Um, but they sealed everything in for the most part. There is a balcony out there. But a lot of closed off walls and no sunny eclipse. So a, a quick note before we get into the food reviews. I want to comment on something that I did not notice until I started editing this. Um, there is a white fluff on my face. Now, I don't know if I was trying to be in solidarity with Donald Duck during his event and kind of look like I had a duck feather on my face, but um, the screen on the new video camera is very, very tiny on the DJI device. And so I didn't notice all day. And no one, I wasn't hanging out with anyone, so no one told me. So yes, on the side of my face, there is a white fluff. I'm aware of it. Can't really edit it out. Can't redo the reviews because of it. So we're gonna just have to live with it. You can have a good laugh at me looking like an idiot with a white fluff on my face, but onward. So while today is April 7th and the events have not kicked off yet, they at least food-wise have. So starting at the beginning of April, um, they started to have the food for and drinks for Donald's Quacky Duck City, which is taking place through June, and as well uh, Space Mountain, the final ignition, the farewell event for the original Space Mountain here at Tokyo Disneyland. That started and will run uh, through July when the attraction closes forever. Uh, so we're going to do a bunch of food today and see how far we make it. Uh, on this list. Uh, so for Donald's Quacky Duck City, we're starting at Tomorrowland Terrace, the only place you've seen me eat pretty much at this point. 
promise we're going to eat other places. I have mobile orders in at other places. We will definitely eat at other places today. Um, so tomorrow in Terrace actually has a couple things that are at several places, but I also wanted french fries for breakfast. So here we are. There is a passion fruit, pineapple jelly, and vanilla mousse. It's passion fruit and pineapple jelly and vanilla mousse topped with fruit sauce. Uh, it's available again at multiple locations. Sweetheart Cafe has it, many places. Uh, and it comes in a souvenir ceramic cup. Well, here's what the actual dessert looks like underneath all that. I do need to take a photo of this. So let's see if that'll... No, it doesn't like it because it's trying to find my face. And my face is in there if I hold it near my face. But uh, you get the idea. It's a mousse dessert. And it comes with this great ceramic cup you get to take home. They give you a little wrapping paper uh, to put it in when you're done. You can take it home. The nice thing is it's in this plastic cup, and so you don't get any on the cup. The cup is clean. You wrap it, you put it away, and you take it home. But let's, uh, let's try this, shall we? I'll eat the cookie first. Their shortbread cookies are always fantastic. Oh, yeah. They're always so good. Exactly what you want shortbread to taste like. You know, I used to hate these jelly desserts my first couple of trips. I've really come around on them. I think they're better now than they used to be, honestly. But yeah, passion fruit forward for sure. I don't know how much pineapple I'm getting, maybe a hint, but mostly passion fruit flavor and then very creamy. Um, the mousse brings a lot of cream. Do I gotta rank this at a seven? I'm gonna go a six. It's pretty good. Definitely something for my tart dessert lovers out there. The other dessert we have I'm very excited about is going to be the uh, cheesecake, uh, which is also at Sweetheart Cafe and here and other places, I believe. Uh, it is a sweet cheesecake with lemon sauce and lemon-flavored lemon flavored chocolate sauce. I assume that's the coating. It's accented with a yellow cookie shaped like Donald's foot, same as the mousse was. Uh, and with this, you can get the ceramic plate as well, which I also got because I think this event is great. I love the merchandise. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get everything. Let's have the cookie. I know it's the same cookie, I just wanted to eat it. Oh, it's real dense. So it's cheesecake with a chocolate sauce, lemon chocolate sauce, they said, over a, over a cake. I don't know if I'm crazy about the lemon flavor. It kind of makes it taste like a cleaning product. I feel like I just ate lemon pledge. It's, it's very tart and very artificial in nature. Lemon flavored chocolate sauce. I don't know about that. Maybe that's what's doing it. I think it's coming from the cheesecake. And the cake underneath is nice. It's moist and light and fluffy. And, but that, that artificial flavor is not doing it for me. I think this is a, I think it's a two. Someone might like it, but I'd be surprised. I'd be very surprised. I'll take another bite just to make sure. It's definitely from that chocolate sauce. It's way too chemically. Way too chemically. So not event related, but it's a Donald. I, I think the timing is suspicious, is the candy case, which comes with the bag of jelly beans. So, or they call them gummy candy here, but uh, the jelly beans, it comes with this Donald Duck little candy machine you could take home. Why do they sell that at a counter service restaurant? I don't know. Are jelly beans usually a dessert you have after hot food. Not in my experience, but maybe I'm wrong. Jelly beans always feel like a separate thing. It's like a, you know, middle of the day, like, oh, a bag of jelly beans, I'll have some. I don't know if jelly beans after a meal. Maybe people do that. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm wrong. They're more like a middle of the day 
snack far away from mealtime, I feel. So for Space Mountain, the final ignition, Tomorrowland Terrace has uh, the Coca-Cola and Lemon Vanilla Sparkling Jelly Drink for 700 yen. So it's Coke and Lemon Vanilla Sparkling Jelly. And you can see it's down there. I'm gonna try to mix it, I think. I mean, there's also a full two lemon wedges at the top of this thing. That actually works really well if you're if you like lemon with your Coke. This is gonna blow you away because you get so much of that lemon flavor from the jelly, and I'm sure also the lemon wedges that are thrown in here. That's why they give you the nice big straw to suck it through, um, but it tastes like a very very orange uh, orangey a very, very lemony uh, Coke. So it's regular Coke, super lemony. Um, I'm sure there's many of you, this will tick the box. I don't really want to drink a whole glass of regular Coke, but that's good. Give that a... I'm going to give that a five. Because it is, at the end of the day, it's just Coke with, with a jelly in it. Uh, but it's very good. It's enjoyable. It's something worth having. Um, the other thing you do is to some drink items you can add on a rubber coaster for Donald's Quacky Duck City right now. So you might want to do that. You could add that onto the Space Mountain one, weirdly enough. It's any, I think it's any beverage. All right, let's move on to our next location. So the special flavors at the Big Pop are 500 yen, they're more. Regular flavors out here at Carts are 400 yen and 600 for the refill. Again, you get basically the equivalent of two boxes and a refill of a big bucket. Um, the flavor here, sadly, is just salted, so not the most exciting, but we're here for the box. I have procured more space garbage. I have my special popcorn box for the final ignition. Before the future begins, the new Space Mountain up at the top, old Space Mountain in the bottom and a rainbow, very cute, kawaii. And then uh, we got, let me spin this around, we got astronaut Mickey in his Space Mountain outfit. There's another cool thing, let's go look at the, the banner is up, let's go look at it. So yes, the special, special if I can talk today, the special entrance banner is up a day ahead of the event, the final ignition celebrating Space Mountain will close at the end of July, forever. And the new Space Mountain will rise on this site. Very exciting. We're now in Mickey's Toontown, which is very much alive and well in Tokyo Disneyland. Uh, pretty much, in a lot of ways, the original version from uh, Disneyland in Anaheim. Not really similar to the version in Florida that was Toontown Fair. Um, but a lot of the things that were removed from the Anaheim Toontown um, are still here. The fountains with Mickey, the Roger Rabbit, all of those are still here. Pretty much untouched, which is great. I mean, and the Gag Factory store, which is now a relic in Anaheim, not only is here, but the conveyor belt actually works, which it didn't for, man, the last 10, 15, maybe more years of it existing in Anaheim before it was removed for Runaway Railway. Either way, the uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie Good Times Cafe uh, has a special drink, which, again, um, it said online is only at the gazebo, but it turns out it's in uh, multiple locations, which is great for us. Uh, let me read the description here, which is going to be uh, Dice Mango and Lemon Wedge Sparkling Drink. I don't know what else is going to happen in this drink, but we'll find out together. Is it actual diced mango or mango candy? That's what I want to know, really. Wow, whatever, this is fantastic. So that yellow stuff is actually popping candy, so like Pop Rocks. And so I have that going on right now. On top of that, it's a carbonated beverage, it's bubbly, so there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff, a lot of wackiness going on, right? It's Donald's Quacky Duck City, so we expect some wackiness, right? This is excellent. 
I, I've said this, I think, in, in a previous video, their sparkling specialty drinks are usually pretty great. So yeah, it's like, whether it's chunks of actual mango or mango jelly or mango candy, either way, you get a really nice, real tart, strong mango flavor, um, which is cut on the back end by the lemon flavor too, which I think, I think the soda is lemon flavored. I think that's what's happening here. Either way, it's refreshing. It's a little sticky sweet, but it works given the mango and lemon flavors. Uh, it should be tart, I think. I, I think this is a six out of seven. Highly recommend. I don't know if, if the mic's picking up the popping in my mouth or not. But I love this. This is great. So that's at the gazebo. It's here. It's probably at a few other places. I'll refine this list at some point, I promise. Uh, the other thing you'll find in Toontown is Do Donald Duck's Harmony Frosty, uh, which is going to be at Toontown Treats. It's a truck that looks like a Toontown paint truck. Uh, combines pineapple yogurt and Ramune flavors for a balance of sweet and sour. I think the menu said something different, maybe? Let's see what I've got on the photo. Let's see. Donald Duck's Harmony Frosty, Ramune, and yogurt. That's all it says. Ramune is a Japanese soda. You've probably seen them before. They, I think they still sell them in the Japan Pavilion at Epcot, or they at least used to. Okay, so I think this is yogurt on top of frozen Ramune, essentially. Um, they did one of these for the 40th. It was really hard to drink, but once it melted, it was pretty darn good. This is very much not melted. The, the nice thing about these is they hold up for a while. Um, so this this will be solid even if it's hot today for a good bit That'll do it So ramane is a Japanese carbonated soft drink it was introduced in 1884 in Kobe uh, by the Scottish pharmacist Alexander Cameron Sim Ramane is available in cod neck bottle a heavy glass bottle whose mouth is sealed by a round marble due to pressure of the carbonated contents So you may remember I don't know if they still have them in Japan or not in Epcot but it's a glass bottle and you, you the marble stays in there. Um, it's a pretty novel thing. People really like it. Um, their most common flavor is the lemon lime that has remained largely unchanged over time. I think this is the lemon lime. Yeah. It is perfection. It tastes just like the soda, just frozen. It's really great. Um, I will say I love this. This yogurt topping is pretty fantastic. This might be better than the 40th one was. I might like this more. Um, pineapple yogurt, yeah. Um, it's definitely pineapple flavor. So it's like pineapple yogurt. So like you're getting pineapple, lemon, and lime together. Super sweet, very refreshing. I mean, this is gonna be a summer event. This is going into June, which it gets miserable here. I will tell you, people warned me that when, when I first time I came in the summer, they're like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna die in that humidity. And I was like, I'm from Orlando. I know what humidity is. It's so much worse here. It feels so much worse. I remember going back to the hotel at noon every day to shower. This is so good. This is a must get. Seven out of seven. Absolutely. Uh, note again, again, I just got that different drink. I was able to add on a coaster. So what we're going to do uh, is we'll have another contest. I need you guys to write the words, two words, super duck in the comments. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. And someone's going to get sent when I get home from Japan. Someone's going to get sent this really cool coaster but there's more to eat I've only as my good friend Josh would have said I have only begun to eat only just begun to eat uh, so let's continue apologies there are no sunny or well lit tables at Grandma Sarah's kitchen which uh, is inside Splash Mountain so those are uh, Splash Mountain logs going by that's after the final drop and uh, that's what's happening here I decided to sit outside because that's a nice atmosphere, that, and the music, and it's a little dark in there. Like, don't get me wrong, that's nice when it's cold out, but 
and it's a beautiful interior, but um, this is where it's at for me. I like to sit out here, and also it's less crowded out here too. Uh, so for, this is a moment I've been dreading. I don't particularly like Grandma Sarah's food. Um, I'm talking about it like she's a real person. That's the name of the restaurant. Um, they have a special set of Grandma Sarah's for Donald's Quacky Duck City. It is omelet rice, or omu rice as they call it. Uh, a hamburger steak, which is going to be like a hamburger patty without the bread. And an egg with cheese feet. So that is an egg on top with two slices of cheese shaped like webbed duck feet. Uh, and then there's a dessert, which is a mango-flavored Mont Blanc. And the set also includes a soft drink. They don't have diet soda here. It is noisy out here. I'm warning you. They don't have diet soda here, so I just got the orange drink, which is like an orange soda, I think. Or is it like an orange juice? I forgot. It's an orange soda. It's obviously not a diet soda, but something came with the set. I had to get something. I didn't want Coke. Coke is so sticky to the regular Coke. And now the train. Look at that. There they go. This is a cool spot though, maybe not for recording with audio, but to sit, there's a lot of activity here. All the activity that's missing from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, right? Do not eat. Do not eat, it's okay. I'm not gonna eat it, I'm gonna take it home. Like all the other weird paper garbage I've gotten today. This will, this will come home and sit in a folder. All my weird novelty items. There we go. I'm not excited about this. Is there like a pasta on top that's unadvertised? I don't know what that is between the egg and the Hamburg steak. I know that's, that's omu rice on the bottom. So omelet with rice. The things I do for content. Here goes nothing, kids. I'm gonna cut in there. That's pretty thick for the Hamburg steak here, actually. It's a nice big one. Look at the thickness on that boy. Is it onion? Yeah. Crunchy onion on top. The Hamburg steak is, is imagine the most basic fast food hamburger. Like, maybe even like your school cafeteria, which may be mean to a lot of school cafeterias, if I'm being honest. It's very basic. There's not a whole lot going on. I actually would equate it more to a fast food meatloaf than I would a hamburger. That's what I think it tastes like. Like a, not bad quality, but the absolute most basic fast food meatloaf is what I'm getting from that. All right, omu rice. It's actually not watery like a lot of omu rice is, which is my usually my consistency problem with the dish, which is a preference thing. Plenty of people like omu rice. That's just a me thing. I understand that. So I thought I would be gagging eating this. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. I don't recommend this. I don't think this is one of the better counter service meals in the park. Not this dish, at least. I'll come back and try the other stuff at Grandma Sarah's, but... I give this a three. It's passable. And maybe there's a pickier eater where gravy and egg and rice and hamburg or meatloaf feels okay, and I think you'll be okay with it. But I wouldn't run here to get it. I am excited about the dessert, though. All right, so again, Mont Blanc with mango. So they've had these Mont Blanc little, I don't know what to call them, cream cake uh, mousse. I don't think it's even mousse. I don't know what to call it, honestly, but they've done a number of flavors. The chocolate one's real good. I forget where that is, if it even is still a thing. These are usually pretty good, though. Nice big chunk. Sorry, I basically did a cross-section so I can take a picture of half the dessert. So I know I overdid it on the fork. Apologies on that. They put the popping candy on that again. 
which I guess is a staple of this event. That is fantastic. Um, real rich, strong mango flavor. But it's not overly tart either, which is nice. It's, 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 it's got the right amount of sweetness to it. It's on the verge of being too tart, but it's not. So you're gonna get all that mango flavor, a lot of creaminess, a beautiful soft cake at the bottom, which pairs really well with it. This is a six. I would give this a six out of seven, the dessert, but you have to buy the set to get it. And I don't know that, you know, the, the set's not particularly cheap. At, uh, was it 2,000 yen, is that right? 2,040 yen, so um, I, I'm, I can't do the translation to US dollars in my head, but I think that's like 16, 15, 16 bucks maybe, somewhere in that zone. I think you could do better for that price in this park. This just isn't great. So don't, I wouldn't run here, but it's, it's a passable meal. charge in the mountain and then that's how we're getting power to our little rockets to go out in this space i'm sure there's more going on than that but the placement of this ship inside the mountain the fact that there seems to be like a power source hooked up to it when it's there in the load area these little lightning bolts you know, that's my theory i have no idea
We're now at my favorite named restaurant in Tokyo Disneyland. It's called Ice Cream Cones. That's the name of their ice cream parlor. It's just called Ice Cream Cones. They have a special Sunday for Donald's Quacky Duck City. It is the Cheese Whip and Mango Sunday. Uh, cheese Whip and Mango Sunday top with a pair of Donald's feet is available at Ice Cream Cones. That's all it says. I'm guessing it's a... Is it cheese flavored ice cream? Is it? I, I don't even know. I guess so. It's good. I mean, I love their ice cream. It's very milky and creamy. It just tastes like super creamy vanilla ice cream. I. And those are chunks of mango. You know? Nice fresh mango chunks. These are going to be those. I'm going to have 40 of these shortbread cookies today. Not complaining, they're delicious. What is the blue at the bottom? I got to get down in there. It looks like a gelatin. Wow, the band's playing zippity doo dah. It was the only place in the world you're gonna hear that now. It's nice to hear it. So with this, I would say it's, it's almost tastes like a little bit like the ramen, but maybe it's blue raspberry. It might be blue ra. Yeah, it's blue raspberry. The gelatin, uh, the fresh mango, and then the ice cream. This is fantastic. Seven out of seven. Unbelievable. Pink color. Join Mickey and his pals as they celebrate family and friendship in a world of beautiful colors. As usual for your viewing pleasure, I am sitting directly in sunlight. It's warm, it turned into a very warm day. Um, we're at the Plaza Pavilion, which is a restaurant that exists at Disneyland, operates very differently here, and the menu's very different here as well. 
um, they're taking part in uh, Donald's Quacky Duck City. That's why we're here uh, with a special set and a drink. Uh, they have a, uh, I got, there's two different sets. I got the one that seemed more themed and seemed more edible, which would be the Duck Dive Pasta set. Includes fettuccine carbonara with a beef sauce, an egg top with cheese slices shaped like Donald's feet to make it look like he's diving in. There's also blue cheese on top. I want to clarify, I said blue cheese. This is not blue cheese like BLE. This is blue cheese like, I think it's blue Parmesan cheese. <laughs> my favorite thing that's ever happened. Uh, the dish also comes with the dessert, which you can buy these things separately, by the way. Uh, the dessert is the cheese mousse with pineapple jam. Um, okay. And includes a soft drink of your choice. You can upgrade to get the uh, sparkling drink, which is the special. Uh, the sparkling drink is a tropical fruit and orange jelly orange sparkling jelly drink with souvenir coaster. Uh, so the interesting thing about the coasters is I thought it was going to be one released every so often. It's not. They're mystery coasters. I'm going to be here a lot until I finish this set. So we're going to find out which one we get. There's three of them you can get. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, the drink is inspired by Donald with white foam and yellow syrup and includes one of three souvenir coasters. That's all it says for, for that one. Um, the interesting thing is if you buy one of the sets, whether the Duck Dive or the classic, the Quacky Classic set, you also get a Donald placemat. In the past when they did souvenir placemats, they actually upsell souvenir placemats at other restaurants. They're plastic. This one is not. It's paper, so you got to take real good care of it, but... It's still trying to find my face. If I hide my face behind here, then it can't find me. But yeah, the placemat, it's very cute. I need to protect that at all costs to quote Wish. Let's put that aside. We can take that, take that boy home. Also, time for tray appreciation. I love the trays at Tokyo Disney. They're all individual for each restaurant. No two are the same. Could you imagine a world where each counter service has its own themed trays? I know, who, who would think, actually fun fact, that used to be a thing at the other parks, including Disney World. I own some. I have one for Sunshine Seasons when it reopened as that in the 90s. Um, and I also have a, I think I have a, um, I think I have an Adventureland Veranda sponsored by Kiko Min Teriyaki Sauce. So, yeah. What a life. What a life. So again, this is a fettuccine carbonara with beef sauce, the egg, and the blue cheese. I get such a, such a kick out of the food here sometimes. It actually looks pretty decent. I'm gonna get in that blue cheese. B-L-U-E cheese. They did give me a spoon. I guess I could do the Italian thing, but I think the spoon's for the dessert, actually. What I found over the years is they're Italian. It's so funny. So much of their counter service, I think, is kind of weird and gross, and it's not a cultural thing all the time. It's usually just a quality thing. Even the locals, a lot that I've spoken to, feel that way. Um, but their pasta, you know, no, almost no one can do fast food pasta correctly, you know, anywhere in the world. So I'm always amazed that this this is pretty solid. The pasta's cooked right. The sauce is nice and creamy and buttery. Um, it's not too heavy. It's not too light. It's somewhere in between. Uh, the blue cheese is definitely Parmesan cheese dyed blue. Um, out of seven, I'm gonna give this a four. It's it's pretty it's pretty edible. Oh, um, I don't like that that egg is hot. And now the yolk is spilling in. I don't like that. That is not my thing. Not with pasta. I'm gonna eat around that. So for the carbonara, there is there's some ham in here. No. Beef sauce. I guess it's beef. 
And beef isn't amazing. But the pasta is real solid. I give it four. I wouldn't run here unless you need a coaster. But, uh, oh no, my Donald dessert is melting in the sun. His face is half melted. Let's put the pasta aside for a minute. Let's try the sparkling drink. Actually, let's try the dessert before it's too late. But I need a sip of something, actually. Back. Let's go to the drink. I'm going to the drink. Again, tropical fruit and orange sparkling jelly. Jelly. So I think... I'm going to go on record that I think it's a tropical fruit drink with orange jelly. So a tropical fruit soda, sparkling soda. And then... Orange is going to be the jelly, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, I'm kind of getting both from the soda, so maybe the soda is full. I am getting like tropical juices and orange. It kind of tastes like orange juice if you threw a little pineapple juice in it and then made it carbonated. I've had some alcoholic seltzers that taste a little like this, actually. Well, obviously this doesn't have alcohol, but... It's a really nice mix that, when you get the orange jelly, you get that... tartness in the orange. It's tart and sweet, and it actually brings a lot into each sip. So this is a five. I think this one's a five out of seven. It's very good. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I can't wait any longer. I say we open the coaster and see which one I got. They're not really super sealed, but they're... Obviously, you can't go behind the counter and open them. Oh, I got the pink one. They're like felt? They're felt coasters. I don't know how well these would hold up over time, but... We love Donald. Let me take a little separate video so you guys can see that better. They're really cute. It's Mickey and Minnie in their, like, Donald celebratory outfits. I love that they're dressed like him. With King Donald there, and then the Donald Quacky City logo on the back. This is very cute. I love these. I do need a full set. I might need a second set to use. That might be a thing. Okay. The dessert, again, uh, to recap, is... Da, 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 da. The cheese mousse with pineapple jam. When they say cheese mousse, I think they just mean dairy. Um, so don't expect like a cheese flavor typically. Watch, I said that now and it's going to taste like cheese. They're going to spite me now. Actually, it might kind of be like a cheesecake. Let's see. It has a little bit of the taste of a cheesecake, for sure. Um, it's a beautiful quick service cheesecake. It's so light and airy, but it packs all that flavor you want out of the cheesecake, that sharpness of the cheese. Um, it's fantastic. And they, they don't overdo it with the pineapple. It is the, the lightest hint of pineapple. It is absolutely perfect. I don't know what this blue cream is, I think it's like a blue raspberry cream. I want to get some of it in there. That could be very good. Oh, yeah. One swipe, though, and that cream is mostly gone. I can maybe get one more bite with it. We need more of that in this dish. There's some fresh pineapple on the side, too. Um, this is a seven. I think this is fantastic. I would come and just get this. And you could. You could come and get this in the sparkling drink. You don't have to get a set of food like I did. I wanted the placemat, so I came and got the placemat. I just checked to make sure it's still on the chair. That is very, very good. So this is a... Again, my, my recommendation would be... I, I wouldn't do the pasta. It's gonna, this is going to be the hot summer months, this event. That's heavy and a lot of cream for the summer. Come get a nice, light, cool dessert and a nice, refreshing drink and collect some coasters. That's my recommendation.
I'm sure there'll be final ignition souvenir medallions, but I'm going to get these classic ones while they're still here because maybe they'll be replaced tomorrow when the event starts. So it's the first day of, official day of Donald's Quacky Duck City, but as you can see, the weather is terrible. It's windy and rainy and well, we'll see how much happens. It looks like the rain has dissuaded not many people from going to the park. This could be pretty miserable. We're gonna see how bad it is. The yesterday was catastrophic. People, you had to be in the park by 8.52 a.m., which is pre-opening. So there's people here, but not many actually. That, that's the end of the security line. None of it's fallen. At the entrance, it's only about a quarter back, so it's actually pretty good today. You couldn't ask for a nicer day. For the final ignition of Space Mountain, they've set up a space photo play so you can get a picture in a rocket without disturbing the ride, which is great. Uh, there's a sign over here that I want to talk about for a moment. In July 2024, Space Mountain will temporarily close. I mean, they're knocking this one down after approximately uh, 40 years of history. Uh, what does that say? Oh, at the Space Mountain photo place. At the Space photo place. Capture a scene from your intergalactic journey on that Space Mountain spacecraft, ensuring that this unforgettable chapter is forever preserved. Information, step into the space photo place where everyone is welcome. We especially encourage the following guests to come and enjoy our photo taking experience. Space Mountain enthusiasts, those who have created cherished memories with Space Mountain since its inception in 1983, and those who envision the future of Space Mountain. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Teasing a little bit about the text, but otherwise, this is a really cool thing. Like the, the, to have a photo op for the farewell of a ride, like this is this is top tier. So of course, there are Quacky Duck City medallions, and I'm not in focus even. There's one with Mickey dressed as Donald. It's very cute. Or kawaii. And we have Donald. No awareness whatsoever. Started the Harmony and color set a couple days ago, but now this machine got updated with the Mini for Quacky Duck City. So it looks like there's actually going to be a fair amount of these. We're going to have like Fab Five Plus because we got Chippendale who stole Donald's medal. Even in Donald's dream world, Chippendale won't cut him any slack. Found uh, at the entrance exit at Country Bears is a store. And they have two more Harmony and Color medallions and not related to any set I'm doing, but I don't know if this big thunder one. Even though it's rainy and the weather has finally subsided a little bit, uh, we're going to try the special set from Sweetheart Cafe, which is in World Bazaar. This is, I've talked about this on some shows before, this is home of what I call the weird sandwiches. I've done a lot of seasonal events here and we try to review stuff and the sandwiches are always so weird and often not very good. Um, this particular special set includes a uh, pulled pork sandwich topped with corn, cheese, mustard, black pepper, and yellow bread inspired by Donald. Now, you know, a pulled pork sandwich sounds good, right? But this isn't the pulled pork you and I are going to be used to. The quality is going to be weird and different. I, I know that already, but let's let's do it. I'm gonna regret this. Oh. And things I will do for a lunch case. 
I didn't even really get to the sandwich there. That was just lettuce and bread. That giant bite. Cold pulled pork. <laughs> Not my favorite. Corn, cheese, and mustard is a weird topping combination for me. I like a good deli sandwich with, with cheese and mustard, sure. And I love corn. I eat corn with lots of things. I don't want corn on my deli sandwich. Um, it's a two. It's a two out of seven. It's a weird combination. There's not a lot. There's way more bread than sandwich. The bread tastes a little funky, too. The bread's not particularly fresh. It tastes like it's out of a bag. It's a two out of seven. Ugh. Um, but the reason I got it was this. I needed a lunch case. Um, I'm in love with all this Quacky Duck City stuff. It's great merchandise and lunch bag. Not that I'm going to use it. I just have them. Maybe those those TikToks about me being a hoarder are probably right. Um, the set comes with a drink. I got iced coffee. They don't have diet soda there. Um, one of the things here is the gum syrup, which is going to be essentially simple syrup. So it might be a little weird for some of you to do this, but the sweetener is this. It's just going to be a clear liquid. That's all it is. Just a clear liquid. I'm going to pour that in my coffee. And then obviously they have little creamers, which are these even still a thing in America? These little creamers, they still do this anyway. I feel like those are the staple of my diners in my childhood with the little coffee creamer cups. And I'm not going to review iced coffee, but you get the idea. Um, it'll hit the spot. It's not Starbucks. They do have a Starbucks at my Hama station if you really need it. I think there's two of them there, actually. It might be starting to rain again. The dessert is going to be a grape jelly and yogurt mousse. starting to rain again oh boy wow oh, that's actually delightful it's just really light and airy vanilla yogurt uh, like a fresh grape jelly at the bottom and then a little bit of jello on the top it really hits the spot. This is this is great. Um, this I would give a six out of seven because it's nothing outrageous. It's grape jelly and yogurt and Jello, um, but it's good. It happens to be quite good. It doesn't actually. Some events they'd actually theme this to the event. It just has a Mickey head on top. I'm trying to eat fast because it's raining. All right, time to go. With the weather being like this, I'd be very surprised if they're going to have the parade today. Um, luckily, I'm coming back tomorrow anyway, so. Um, the nice thing about today was, plus people came and opened, so it was easier than it would be normally to get the standby pass to go in the store to buy the Donald merchandise. So I got that coming up at 3.30, I think. Uh, and um, then tomorrow I could actually show up a little later and get a parade spot. I don't have to be here at the crack of dawn to fight people for merchandise, uh, for a chance to get merchandise, I should say. But um, that set was, yeah, the set I just had, I was, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't. Um, there are other places to get the lunch bag. You could add it on to meals at Tomorrowland Terrace, and I forget where else, but it's not the only place to go. I felt the need to, to try the sandwich to show you guys an example of what those sandwiches are like, but it was... I ended up throwing it out. It's, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't eat cold, cold pork with corn and mustard and cheese. But, uh, just no, no good. Too much bread. It's just so bad. It's so bad. Um, so, um, I actually pulled the standby pass for Buzz Lightyear, Astro Blasters. It'd be pretty much identical to the version at Disneyland and Disneyland Paris. Um, I'll show you a little bit of it, but nothing crazy. Did pretty good with standby passes today, even though it's. it's you know, 
a little more crowded than it was on Sunday. I did Space Mountain very early, and uh, I did Monsters, Inc., and then we have Buzz Lightyear. Um, so the free standby pass, as long as it exists, is a good deal. I mean, it's free. You just have to remember to get in early, book one, and then keep booking every time the second you can make another one. Um, just keep doing that. Uh, you know, it's been a fun little rainy day, but um, making it hard to finish my Donald's Quacky Duck City vlog, though. Trying my best. So, the, so we're going to do Buzz Lightyear. I'm going to see if our rainy day version of the parade happens. I'll stand towards the back to see if that happens. And then, uh, well, actually, if the rainy day happens, that'll interfere with my Buzz Lightyear. You know, I could, I could see the rainy day version, then go to Buzz and then shop. If anything, we might sacrifice Buzz in all of that. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I have a very quick succession of things I have. Again, maybe rainy day parade, Buzz Lightyear ride, uh, shopping at Disney & Co. for the Donald's Quacky Duck City merchandise. And then pretty much as soon as my shopping window is... It's, I have to shop in like less than 10 minutes uh, because we then booked a reservation for the coffee house. We're going to go back there. Um, I'll explain. We're going back there, but I'll, I'll explain exactly what happened when we get there. But um, the dessert set for Donald's Quacky Duck City is only available between the hours, I think, of 2 and 5. I think that's it. Yeah, for three hours a day during the lunchtime, essentially. Um, and so let's go do all of that. May we have your attention, please? Due to weather conditions, this performance of Quacky Celebration, Donald the Legend, has been canceled. Thank you for your understanding. We hope you will enjoy instead a special greeting by Donald Duck and his friends. Thank you. We're being instructed to clap for Donald Duck. Now fast.
So I did that fun thing again where I film a whole review video of food and I didn't have the mic on. So there's no way my audio came through on uh, that last video. So real quick, I'm gonna give you um, a quick recap of uh, our time here at the coffee house. So I came a couple nights ago just for dinner to get the steak plate. Um, I forgot, of course, that the um, dessert set is only available from two to five daily. Keep that in mind, whether you're making a reservation or doing the standby line, which the standby line is usually not very bad. It, it's certainly um, plausible. Um, so the sirloin steak set or steak plate, um, they have two sizes, 140 grams and 210 grams of steak. Uh, and uh, that's gonna be, uh, comes with a, a Japanese almond and fruit sauce, which I thought kind of tasted like teriyaki to me. Um, butter, rice, mashed potatoes, and eggplant gratin. The mashed potatoes are cute because they look like Donald's butt. Um, also underneath were greens that were unadvertised, but they were nice. I'm glad there were some greens with the plate. It was nice to have them. The rice was solid. The eggplant um, was good. The steak is perfectly fine. It's, it's, it's not too tough. It's not too tender. After a couple weeks in Japan, it's probably what some of you might want um, if you've only been eating Japanese for a couple weeks. Not that, I'm just, look, this is one of the best food countries and absolutely one of the best food cities in the world. Um, but maybe after a little while you come here, you might want something a little more to your palate. Or if you have a real picky eater, I think they're going to particularly like this. But it's, it's, it's a fine, it's a very okay piece of steak. And the sides are real solid. I like them a lot. Um, so I give it a four out of seven. It's one of the better meals you could have in this park. I think it, it feels more like real food than a lot of stuff in this park does. So um, I think it gets points for that. But uh, coming here now, we came for the special dessert set, um, which is offered from two to five, including a mango and passion fruit cake, a mango and pineapple tart, and a mango and blue jelly verine. Um, starting with, I'll go from worst to best, the, uh, the cake. The mango and passion fruit cake is just way too tart. It tastes like I bit into a citrus fruit, um, just straight up, but then it has a doughy consistency. And the, the bottom cake layer was actually kind of rubbery. I'm really surprised. And you know, those are mini marshmallows on top, but they didn't do a whole lot um, to save it, honestly. My fate, well, we'll go up the chain. Um, the Varine is basically blue jello with mango sauce and mango chunks in there. And um, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's very basic. And then my favorite thing though was the tart. The mango and pineapple tart was exceptional. Um, real fresh chunks of mango on top. Um, nice sweetness from the cream. The, the pie crust is fantastic. So thin and flaky and buttery. Um, absolutely perfect. It's very small though. My biggest problem is it's essentially a mango dessert three ways plate. Um, and it's not a lot of variety, I think. It's, it's all very, I don't know, it's all very same across the board. So that makes me not want to recommend it. As for the coffee that comes with it, you get an iced cafe mocha, which is very cute, but I will tell you, despite being advertised as cafe mocha, it is a very black coffee. And the only, you get a hint of that mocha, but really not a lot. Um, you can mix in, you can push in that cream from the top to sweeten it up a little bit. And the coffee jelly might be off-putting for some. It's, it's jelly that tastes like coffee. And they're big chunks, that's why we got the thick straw in there, you can see that. Um, but overall, I'm just gonna give this a two. It's a shame because I love Coffee House. Um, so I'm disappointed that the dessert plate's not as great as it usually is, but this changes all the time. So we'll come back in a couple months and it'll be different and probably uh, great again. But um, for now, I think it's a skip. Um, but the sirloin plate's a feasible option when I come here and get that. The soda floats with the ice cream are fantastic. And there's a Phantom Melon one that I highly recommend. So um, I check out the coffee house either way. Since nowhere has Diet Coke or Coke Zero, I'm getting iced oolong tea in a lot of places. This is the first time they've given me a paper straw. It is the most coarse paper straw I've ever gotten. It just feels like a tree. It's so rough. It's weird. All right, so I can pick up my Space Mountain photo between two and five. 
seems like a really short amount of time, but we have to go to the camera center to do that. Remember when I talked about how dead Sunday was, relatively? So the park is dead today, but people are very much here for the event. There's a nine, look at this. This is actually a 90 minute wait for coasters and this meal set. I don't know if I'm ever gonna ever get the other two. I'm gonna have to rope drop, and even then I bet it's a, a wait of some amount. I, I may give up on these because I will not wait in this line. We'll see as the event goes on if the line dies down, but keep this in mind if, I know I feel bad I reviewed food at this location and you may not even be able to get in it. So similar to Fantasy Springs, there is a free sticker you can get. You have to come to cast members at Space Mountain and ask, and you get this sticker before the future begins, the final ignition. I love these little free giveaways. So there are Quacky Duck City medallions at all of the monorail stations as well. So I'm going to be busy. I got here about three hours before the parade started and I'm four rows back. But, you know, being the tall American has its advantages. I can see pretty easily over everybody. Um, the thing to note is you should never hold your phone. I mean, you shouldn't do this in America either, but don't hold your phone above your head. If you're filming or taking photos, it's very rude. Um, but having the height advantage, this is fine. But but again, like three hours in advance, and we are fourth row. I mean, it's only the it's really only the second day of this with the rain out yesterday. Uh, I don't be like this for a little bit. Maybe I'll be like this through the whole thing if they really love it here. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But nonetheless, I'm gonna sit and chill and do some work and hang out for three. At least it's a beautiful day. Three hours later. Celebration! Yeah. <laughs> Double the legend will be 
to try the corn potage popcorn, which is corn soup popcorn, uh, mostly because there's a bucket I want that came back today. It's, it's kind of a silly bucket, but I also love it. Also, I like that it collapses. It's easy to travel back home with. And Chippendale, I'm not going to unwrap them right now, but Chippendale are hanging out on the strap. It's cute, though. It's weird and cute. I love it. Also, um, our editor, Brittany, asked specifically for the silly popcorn tongs. So, like, a lot of people here don't like to handle the popcorn because it's, you know... Handling food is not common in Japan, um, you know, so the, the tongs were created for people that maybe want to use them to eat the popcorn instead of their hands. It's, it's a weird, convoluted thing, but Brittany really wanted one. I get it. They're, they're a kooky, weird souvenir. I don't think I actually own a set. Uh, maybe I got to get one this trip. No joking, the corn potage tastes like corn soup. It's like having crunchy corn soup. It's insane. I, I love it. It's salty and tastes like a corn biscuit. It reminds me a little bit of the Zellwood corn biscuit. They used to have a brown derby in flavor. Um, so I, I'm on board. This is a new favorite. All right, I'm going to try to communicate. So the Ariba shop actually has Quacky Duck City stuff, including these tiny little silhouettes. But the one I really want is that one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. wind. <laughs> Bubble surprise, no one. I had to get it. It's not huge, but it's relatively cheap. It's 2,900 yen, which I think is like $24, somewhere in that zone. Um, these are cut by hand. They're the silhouettes. Um... So I think it's a really cool, unique uh, item for the event. Like all the other stuff in the store, like lots of people will own. I don't think a lot of people are going in there buying Donald's Quacky Duck City merchandise. And this just seems like a really weird thing because it's, it's Donald in a very specific costume for this event. So it will only be for this event. They don't really bring costumes back for different events. Very rare. Um, so I just thought this was the coolest thing. Relatively inexpensive, uh, Nice way to mark the visit for the event. Uh, pretty cool. Well, that solves it. Bon Voyage has two. I was like, a bunch of characters are missing. And then I thought about it. Maybe some are at the hotels, too. We're going to have to check the hotels. To be continued. So I started working on this vlog. Uh, it's quite a while ago on the 8th. Um, or 7th actually, right? What day was it? Was it the 8th? I don't remember what day I started. But either way, I started on that Sunday. And it's been a while. Because um, when I went to go buy Duck City merchandise, a bunch of it wasn't there anymore. And so I wanted this to be a complete guide. <laughs> which would include showing you guys more of this stuff. Including also the Space Mountain, the Final Ignition merchandise. So let's... Let's do that real quick. Let me pull some stuff out. Uh, we have this bag. And I apologize, the lighting in my apartment's not great, so I'm using a camera light here to kind of show you the stuff. Get off of the the wide angle. Let's get off of the wide angle and do this, yeah. So this is, it's very cool. Um, it has that chip on it from the load area. All these icons from the attraction. There's no pattern inside, I don't think. Um, this little bag, this is, see the tag? Uh, this is 2,900 yen. It's a little pricey, but uh, cosmetic bag, I guess. All right, this I'm gonna have to open at the end and show you guys what it looks like lit. Um, but it's like a little planetarium light with Space Mountain. So you could have it with the lid on and it'll just illuminate the inside of Space Mountain where you could take it off and light up the whole room it runs on batteries. Uh, there's a couple of different patterns. Three of them it looks like. You have them switch between 
and it'll project Space Mountain and the ship and stars and all that iconography. This is 3,900 yen. Seems kind of like a bargain compared to the, the bag. Here is the cup, silver cup. I have pins in it. Let's pull those out for a minute. Shiny metal cup. I don't know what that's for. Is there like a magnetic coaster? I have no idea. This was 2,500 yen. It's pretty snazzy. Here is the pin, which I think is, well, it doesn't like this. The lighting doesn't like this pin. Let's see if we can get this to focus. There we go. Before the future begins. Very pretty. And that is 1,200 yen. There we go. Uh, we have Astronaut Mickey as a, told you guys about this, the uh, plush badge, they call them. Uh, 2,500 yen. Those are always a little expensive, but they're really well made. I love his little clear visor. He looks good. We have a light up necklace with Space Mountain. And it's got all these, all this cool stuff going on in the necklace part, which I think will actually all light up. It'll light up kind of up the, yeah. Take the light away for a second. There we go. Try to get it to focus on it. Don't worry, there's a video coming where I complain about the new iOS update and how it really harms camera use. This is neat. This was 2,600 yen. We have a glow-in-the-dark wristband, which would be fun to wear on the ride, even though I think, I think that'd be considered rude to light up in the ride, but no, I guess not. Maybe not. Maybe I'm being oversensitive. We have a, what they call a can badge, which is a button. 500 yen is always one of the uh, less expensive, one of the more inexpensive cool things you can take home, the can badges. There is a, a sticker set with a postcard. Sticker's cool because they're they're kind of embossed. They're not flat. 500 yen, that's pretty cheap too. And then I always buy these because I think they're the best representation of the full art. Uh, this is the file folder. I'm bending it a little to fit it in the shot. But the file folder has the full-size art. They're real big on these file folders. I don't know how much they use them in everyday life. But this is 350 yen, so this is actually the cheapest thing you can take home. We've got patches. These are really nice. 2200 Uh, Diecast Tomika, I do, I collect these quite a bit. I mean, someone's probably watched saying, you collect everything. They're not necessarily wrong. Um, so you get two Space Mountain vehicles. They, they sell a regular version of this, or they have sold a regular version, uh, but this is going to have um, special art on them. They're decorated for the final ignition. Um, this should be, yeah, 2800 for the Tomika. We have rubber magnets next. These are 2500 That's a little expensive for three magnets. On to the mystery sets. So they sell a number of things that are mystery sets where you can buy either individual mystery boxes or the whole set. I just buy the whole set typically. So these are keychains. So there's a Mickey, there's the spaceship, there's the mountain in rainbow colors, and a mystery. You guys are going to make me open this. You know what? Okay, fine. When you open them, they are individually packaged, mind you. I don't know if there's a good way to open this without ripping it. So in, anyway, individually, they're 900 yen. And then with the full box, you get them for 3,600. There's no discount. You just get the whole set. 
There's no way to open this without ripping the packaging. So I'm very scared of how badly I'll damage the package. So we're going to leave those for now. I'll see if I can look online and find you what the mystery one is. But if it's not in this video, please, please don't get angry at me. I'll ask Nana to help me translate and find it. Okay, I'll close that up. These might be easier to open, though. Um, this is a figurine set, or a figure set of four. Um, I've shown these in a previous vlog, different series, but uh, they did a Space Mountain set. So they have the full Space Mountain, which is very specifically theirs because it has those, trying to focus, it has those arches on the bottom, which only their version has, or maybe Disney on used to have, I don't know. Um, Astronaut Mickey and that spaceship are, are in here, and then there is, again, a mystery figure, which we'll have to open to see. Luckily, all of these just had a little piece of tape, um, so they're real easy to open. And then they're just bubble wrapped inside, and we can we can take them out. I don't often do this, you guys. I feel I feel pressured, so you guys should be be lucky. Feel lucky about this. Oh, that is wow. He's really detailed. He looks so good. Wow. And he stands on this base. There's no pegs. You just stand him on the base. Oh, this is to fit in the box. They had to put Space Mountain in two pieces. This is cool. Oh, yeah. And here's going to be that weird spaceship from the load area. So it has the stand, but, oh, it does, there's a peg. Look at that. So this one does have a peg, so it'll float. It'll kind of float above the stand. And this is, yeah, I mean, down to the every minute detail, the little ship from the load area of their Space Mountain, which, again, did get, like, a, it got a weird little update in the 2000s, but they still didn't add onboard audio, which is, I think, kind of why we're, Arriving at this point where they're like, our Space Mountain is very out of date. Why don't we not only update it, but make it a completely new Space Mountain that puts all the other parks to shame. And then the Chaser, the one that is a mystery, um, is actually just a variant. It is the, it's Space Mountain at night with the lights that dance. This is, this is badass. Sorry, kids. This is, this is cool. It's not only, it's silver, so it's reflective, and then it has the rainbow on it. This is really cool. All right. Um, I love these little figure sets. They do them all the time for all different things. Sometimes not even for a special occasion, necessarily. But I've, I've bought, I think I have every set ever made. I think they started in 2018. So I've been lucky enough to be able to get all of them. Let me put them back in the box. Individually, um, they're 1600 yen each, and you can get the case then for the price of four of those, which is 6400 yen, and then you get this cool box. The piece de resistance. Let me go to the wide angle. It's a giant cushion of a Space Mountain Ride vehicle. You could, I think it's for plush. I think you're supposed to sit like a medium-sized plush in here. Um, but I mean, I guess you could put your feet in it. it. You could use it as a pillow. You could do whatever you want with it, but oh, it's just a whole Space Mountain vehicle. How cool. I need a whole series of these. I need every ride made in this way. This was 4,000 yen. So not even much more than a lot of other stuff, but... Uh, all right, so we'll come back at the end after that we show the Duck City merch, and I'll light up that Space Mountain planetarium. The Donald's Quacky Duck City merchandise was ordered online, so it's all in a, ne a nice, neat box. Um, oh, we already need the wide angle. This is a stationary set, which includes a file folder. Um, actually, it might be a file folder collection. I think this is a regular file folder. This is like a tiny little sleeve, and then this is an envelope. Um, but this is the art you may recognize from the lunch bag. A 
God, yeah. Oh, look at the big duck. He's so cute. And then the envelope. This is 1,200 yen. So, um, the guac guac sticks. Guac guac is, is Japanese for quack quack, apparently. Um, uh, but, so we have a yellow, right? That's the one you guys saw. But there is a, I guess, like a boys and girls version. <laughs> Shake the whole table. Um, yeah, there's a pink and a blue. They're very popular. They've been selling very quick. They may not make it to the end of the event. Um, they're 1,500 yen each. I love the crowd participation stuff here because I just think it's so different from everywhere else. That's why I liked when Disneyland did for Paint the Night's original run. They did the paintbrush. I really like that. I, I miss Glow with the Show stuff in general for that reason. Um, this is the parade mat. Um, so it'll look like this when we open it. But this is to sit on the ground because it's you know, the ground is dirty, and so people here don't really sit on the ground. Um, I think originally when the park opened in 83, so many people brought picnic sheets that they decided, oh, we should sell our own version of those. Um, and they're, these are smaller than most picnic sheets are in this country, but um, they're definitely big enough even for my big American butt. Um, they're big enough, 950, and they're very cute, and they're a cool way to remember the event. And uh, if I come back, I always bring one back, typically. This time I didn't, so I needed this one. Um, but I probably own, like, 10 of them, mostly because I've forgotten them sometimes. Um, so if you watch the parade as part of this vlog, you saw their hats. So this is essentially a replica of the hat some of the parade performers were wearing with the duck feet, this sailor hat, 3,400 yen. I'm not going to wear it today. It's going to stay. It's white, so it's going to stay in this bag for now. I'm sure I'll wear it for something at some point. Uh, I'm going to say this is a, a just a pouch. I'm sorry, I'm used to, they used to make pass cases, and now I'm not used to them. They're not pass cases anymore. So in the old ones, there used to be like a slot for a pass. But these are just like bags now. He's so cute. I love his button. So this is definitely the outfit he wears for the event, because it's a little different from his regular outfit, as you can tell. Um, but he's a zipper pouch. I don't think you put much in him except maybe change. There's not a lot of room in this. This is more of an accessory. You're not really doing much with this, um, even with small Japanese accessories. Uh, the strap just has like confetti. He's so cute though. Oh my goodness. And this is 36. I was going to say these are usually expensive. 36 on, on the expensive side, but he is adorable. Uh, so I my favorite piece of decor in the park is the fountain. So I wanted... This was a thing I was not originally going to buy. Um, but the fountain is so cute that I wanted one of these guys. If this camera will stay focused. He's just a rubber duck. It's actually like a coin purse. You could put coins in him. But again, very cute. Kawaii, 1400 yen. So, can badge set. So three badges. Chippendale, Donald is King, and Daisy. That art we've seen already. 1100 yen. Uh, these are going to be popular. People love to buy the silly Mickey sunglasses here. I see every, you know, out of country tourist wearing the Mickey. Um, I don't, I, the Mickey, they're fine. I don't know. I like the kooky ones like this. This is more my style. These are 2300 yen. They're plastic, but they're very cute. I'm going to have to wear a whole Donald outfit. Maybe on news tonight when we come back, I'll bust out all my Donald stuff. Uh, we have a Tomika. This is the Disney Resort Cruiser, the bus that runs around the resort. They have, um, I guess I haven't really shown them on the vlogs yet, but um, they just, again, just like a overlay for, again, not a real overlay. They haven't actually overlaid a bus like this, but, um, but there it is. And this is 1,600 yen for a Tomika bus. They're die cast, they're metal. The pin is very cool. I like the pin. With the dangling Donald. 1200 yen. Uh, then there is a, I know people like the headbands. I'm not a big headband collector, but this headband is number one, not a mini ear headband. And number two, um, it's amazing. This is the King Donald headband. 
Oh, oh, we love Donald Duck. Yep, I got the hearts and King Donald in the middle. Oh, oh, we love Donald Duck. The one this song is going to be stuck in my head for, for months. When I came to Very Mini a couple years ago, that song that song is still in my head all the time. 2400 yen. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's just so crazy looking. And then we're going to end our merchandise tour on the most popular item, typically, which will be the plush badges. And they did they didn't do so in past events they'll make sort of everybody. Um, post COVID's been interesting because they won't make everybody anymore. They'll just make a couple of the characters. So um, we got Mickey. Again, in the outfit from the parade, we also have Minnie in her outfit from the parade. How cute are these? These are amazing. Every last detail, the bow, it's in the same style it is in the parade. It's this flat cart comic book style. These are 2,500 yen each, Mickey and Minnie. And then King Donald. All hail King Donald. We love Donald Duck. Every last detail. Very, very cute. 2,500 yen. Oh, no, he's 2,600. Excuse me. He he costs 100 yen more because he is the king. Donald Duck. All right. Um, we're reaching the end of this video. So King Donald would like to ask you if you enjoyed this insane, very long vlog to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Don't forget to enter the contest from earlier in the video. And uh, yeah. We thank you very much, and we're going to end by showing you the Space Mountain Planetarium. Thanks for watching, and we'll have more vlogs coming your way very soon. Okay, so there it is with the lights on. We're going to turn the lights off. I mean, that's that's very cool, too. But uh, I think the coolest thing is there's then a button for color. So you can turn it kind of a little pinkish red. There's a blue. That might be my favorite. That feels right. And then that, that's kind of just white. I think that third one was going to be, it was going to switch between all of them. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's neat. But I will tell you, my favorite thing is it's really cool when you take this off. And we're going to do... This. Let me hold it up more so it hits the ceiling in here and, and center it a little bit for you and we'll put the wide angle on there we go all right everybody we'll see you next time